Here we are, Nanny and Moose, together again with our little fireside chat. A couple of days before Halloween in 1972, we moved into this red ranch, sprawling red ranch in a horse-owned area of Southern California with a red barn and, and white fences and beautiful birch trees and a big long horseshoe driveway. We eventually named it Red Barn Acre. but it became our home for the next 25 years. Our kids at this point, the four kids were all school age and we got them settled in new schools once again. And once Blondie arrived, she came down in her own, someone brought her down, we hired someone. She loved it. She was the calmest horse in the world, remember? They loved her. She was primarily Dubby's horse, but then Margie wanted a horse. So all in all, we must have had three or four horses, two or three at a time. Booty came along for Margie, and we found that the area was very big into 4-H, which was so good for the kids, but also into horse showing. They had a club, the Highland Riders, that we entered our daughters in, and the kids started showing horses. Western saddle and Eastern riding and also horse jumping. Dubby had Joe. It was great. But Dubby won ribbons too. Oh, she did. She was fabulous. Oh, heck yeah. She she was wonderful too. You have a picture of her you're going to show her. Oh, I have pictures of all the kids. In yeah. fact, I'm glad Moosey brought that up. I, I know a lot of you wanted a lot of pictures and we have found them. And I'm going to do several different, you're looking at my nails. And no, we're gonna, I'm not. Oh, yes, you were. And, um, we're we're gonna do a couple of segments, these running ones to music, and I think you'll probably enjoy the, the I as much that as off a gypsy in Scotland. I know you did. We forgot to talk about that ring. We this, won't. <laughs> no, we won't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm getting down the rabbit hole. Right away, Moosey got the boys involved in Pop Warner football. Baseball. Baseball, really? little league. But that's when you started your flying about oh, this yeah. time. Yeah. Gosh, that was so much fun for me. Because I was able to take the kids we went to Guaymas fishing, caught a, Mexico. Sword, a swordfish. We went to Wickenburg to the uh, dude, uh, dude, dude, ranch. dude Ranch. You and I flew to Vegas frequently. Oh, we had long romantic nice weekends. Nice trips. We went to the R Reno R Air Races one time. We you flew up to San Francisco on business. You went to San Diego horse shows with the girls. Yeah. Most of the time he either was taking the boys to these dude ranches or on these Mexican fishing trips or yeah. he became a, a excellent pilot. And, and um, Margie and Debbie were taken to horse shows down in San Diego, yep. just just as uh, spectators. Great. Just a wonderful time. We yeah. went up to, <clears throat> did you mention Solvang? I think we yeah. went with the whole family. About this time, um, I became pregnant with Mike. We decided we wanted to sneak in a couple more. Um, I believe I was about 36, 37 years old by now. And so we became pregnant with Mikey. I have some wonderful pictures. I was huge. Mar Mikey turned out to be 11 and a half, almost 12 pounds. Beautiful baby. I also found a wonderful 
housekeeper also. I did get back into my housekeeper things. I, uh, at this point before I was pregnant with Mikey, I did go back to teaching school again because all the children were in school and, and I found I could do that and also uh, teach at the same time. So life went along great at this point. Um, Mikey was born, beautiful baby. And, um, so I stayed home the rest of that year and um, Kika took care, helped me take care of the babies and uh, the house because half the time the ponies were practically coming in through the side door and we had the horses. What a fun life we had with the kids at that point. Yep. Um, the um, following year, we decided we wanted Mikey to have a pal, so Colleen was born and um, life was off to the races with six kids. favorite times were Christmas times with Moosey reading uh, the night before Christmas, which became, is still a Christmas Eve event. Um, mm -hmm. Moose still reads the night before Christmas to the teenagers. Even Ryan is 18, 19 And we years zoomed old. down to San Diego. Oh yeah, all over. Um, we also decided um, somewhere around here, I think when Colleen was a year old, I decided that I wanted the whole family to go on Family Feud. It was Richard Dawson in those days. It was a fairly early show. And so we went in and tried out and, oh, they thought we were great. And Matthew was only in eighth grade at the time, and he was the youngest child, they didn't put kids on, that was ever chosen, and he was hysterical. Uh, anyway, we won, and we kept winning and winning and winning, and they kept us there until three o'clock in the morning. That's the way they did new, each new show. We had to bring changes of clothing, and everybody was rooting for us, and we made enough money that we decided to do well. We bought a, a house down in Palm Springs. Yes, Palm Desert. We used the down payment for the money that we, we made on Family Feud. So we kind of <clears throat> turned things around here, and now we had a, a place to go to in the winter time, and uh, the kids had so much fun. So once again, we were providing fun, not only for ourselves, but for, it was just why'd a, you stick your tongue out just now? I was thinking of something. Oh. <laughs> just, just, it was so much fun also to bring your parents. Oh, my mom and dad, Moosey oh, was they the- They loved it, they, oh. they, it was all different to them. Palm oh. Desert, my goodness. My father would sit out there, bake in the sun. <clears throat> they loved it, they really did. happy for us and we were so happy that every year they came out so did Moosey's mom and dad in fact uh, that's one thing Moosey promised me when we moved away that he would bring my mom and dad and his own mom and dad out every year and they would stay for six weeks or longer They were yeah. retired at this point. And so our children still had the benefit of, of grandparents. And I think that's important. So let's see, let's let's kind of move this into the break, next break. segment. What's next? The next break would be probably getting into high school years. We, in, education was very important to us. And um, we had heard about these uh, uh, schools in Orange County, uh, a school a school that was for boys, Catholic schools where we wanted the kids to go, and, and a school for the girls. And so our children started these schools and, and uh, a lot of our money, I have to say, was put into education for the kids. It's not that we went to big, we did travel quite a bit, all with Bill's company. 
and they paid for extravagant vacations in Europe and Hawaii and Mexico, right? Yeah. And and London. We, L- yeah, London. And we had the benefit of all this with our traveling. And fortunately, we, we had Kika at home who helped take care of the kids. But, you know, by the time our children, the older four, were teenagers, they were able to take care of Mikey and Colleen. So... Um, they, by the way, became parents to Mikey and Colleen, and many's the time that they would butt in in the raising of Michael and Colleen with their own opinions. And and I remember Dubby was in college, and she called three weeks after she was home, remember? And she said, can I come home? I said, what's the matter? I don't know, I don't know, I guess I'm homesick. She came home and she sat with Colleen who I think was five or six, seven at the time, she missed the little ones, only because she almost felt like a mommy to them. It was so cute. Yeah. And the little ones became part of the horse shows. Horse shows went on all through those years with the girls. Margie was the one that really stayed with the love of, mm-hmm. of horses. High school, we had everything that most people ex- you know, have raising kids. wasn't all Pollyanna living, as you can imagine, raising six children. We had our challenges too, believe me. Children started getting uh, their driver's licenses. I challenged my parents. I don't think I did. No, you were a good girl. <laughs> I was a good girl. But, you know, we had, Matthew was um, the one who, that had to challenge himself all the time, always had to ride his bike faster than everybody, run faster, and half the time his head was bleeding and whatever, but um, he was full of energy. Actually, they all were, but good good kids. We, we were very grateful that we didn't have big things happen. Mm. A few car, every time everybody started to driving their first car, which by the way, Moose felt that they all had to work, so they all got jobs at 16. Yep. Moose felt that this was value training, that everybody had to work for what they needed. And uh, they bought their own cars. And um, pretty soon they were off to colleges, which that's where our money went also. But um, then after that, gosh, oh, somewhere in there when the kids were little, and I'll have to put this back in. Uh, After we had Palm Desert about 10 years, we went up to Big Bear one year for Thanksgiving with the whole family and rented a, a home on the lake. And down the road, we fell in love with the house. Gorgeous, right up 100 feet on the lake. Old 1920 log cabin. Oh, and the real logs what on the outside. huge ice. place inside. 5,000 5, square bedrooms. feet, yeah. Oh, it was wonderful. And I said, we've got to do this. Now, by the way, at this point, I was in real estate. I decided to get my real estate license and I was selling real estate. And I figured out how we could do this. And we said, now you figure out if this is possible. I said, yep, we can do it. We made an offer on the house, but it turned out there was already another offer. It went on and on. Finally, our offer went through. But we had to sell the house in Palm Desert. We did. To have the down for this house that was in, under ownership of the bank. We had to buy it out it, of the bank's hands. It had been taken back by the bank, the, so we did deal with the bank. Those years were wonderful. We had to do a lot of fixing up. This house had been vacant for many years, and um, we hired someone to, oh, it had log staircases. It was beautiful. So that started uh, another 10 years of wonderful times, that family times, we we you have had a dock. Of that too, don't you? Oh, I have wonderful pictures. Crazy. I'll show this. We bought we, a boat. We bought a dock. Had the dock installed, 
a beautiful <laughs> front lawn where we'd go up there and and play lawn tennis and we'd, most, we'd have um, contests. We'd have poker. Horseshoe. Um, horseshoe tournaments and yeah. Moose would buy t trophies for everybody and all the kids by this time the kids were in college they had boyfriends girlfriends half the time we had 20 30 people Uh, the kids would all go off skiing, and Moosey and I would sit back with the fire, <laughs> drinking port in front of the fireplace when the house was empty, and then they'd all come back again. Wonderful time. I'm so grateful for everything that we had, but you know what? We worked. I was uh, selling real estate and doing doing well at it. And about this time, I also opened a business. which you weren't too pleased with, but I did. And Moosey thought, well, it'll be a good write-off the first year, she'll lose money. But guess what? You made money. I did. And it was called Romancing the Home. And it was a little shop of antiques and linens, white linens. At this time, the Battenberg linens and all the linens of uh, the Viennese linens and the and all the beautiful laces, bed bed linens, uh, clothing for little girls, everything was white. And we had so much fun. The girls all helped me and we I created a catalog, a national catalog, and the, the kids would help me do these bulk mailings and Colleen, even Mikey sold lace curtains. He would come down, they were in high school at this point. Well, that was another thing. We had the catalog for a long time. I think I had that for almost 10 years. And Victoria Magazine did a big story on it. I remember writing off saying, why don't you do something? Would you like to do this? It was fun. And Moosey put up with all this. Um, no, all I had to do was make $37,000 bonus. <laughs> and we could afford it. <laughs> anyway, that was another fun thing in, in my life. So life continued with kids and jobs and college years and uh, everything went along. There were some blips here and there with um, boyfriends and girlfriends and we were sailing along through all this. And when Colleen, the youngest of the six, was a senior in high school, it was January of that year, yeah. Moose made a decision. Yeah, I opened an, uh, an office in uh, Las Vegas. Started a business, an environmental business, remediation. And <laughs> I got pretty well known there because it's a small state. I didn't know anybody in the gambling side, but in the university system and the Department of Energy, I knew a lot of people, people knew me, and I made quite a business to go for SAIC and Bechtel and Lockheed, Lockheed Martin. It was fun, but not for you. <laughs> I was just going to say that. I had a really, really tough time. First of all, I did not want to leave my home that I loved. Our son, Bill, <laughs> and his wife and children moved into it. We didn't sell it. And off we went. And I was in tears because it meant not only leaving the home, but all we had 13 grandchildren by this point.
and I was not a happy camper. But when we got there, I had to, I was in real estate at the you time. Know, you weren't a happy camper. You'd do anything for me. You did all through her life. You always did that. I did. Yep. I did. And that's why we've been married 62 years, right? I guess so. <laughs> I started teaching real estate there. In fact, I even got my broker's license. I had been teaching real estate so long. And I hated it because all the houses looked the same. They were all brand new. And there were so many model homes going up that uh, you might be working with clients for two or three weeks. And then all of a sudden they, they wind up buying a model house with somebody else. So I said, this is it. I'm going to go back to teaching because I felt this would help with my, my sorrow about missing all the grandkids. Not only that, we were going back and forth. It was a four hour car drive and we drove back and forth. Uh, Colleen, uh, registered in the University of Las Vegas. So she was nearby and she was the best kid in the world. She knew her mommy was having withdrawals and what you call empty nest syndrome. And she would go to lunch with me because obviously we had this little place that we were renting. Finally, we found a lovely home in an old section of Las Vegas that had the older homes, beautiful old, old Las Vegas. Trees trees and Which you didn't and have in most places old houses nice old neighbors and we lived in that rented house we never did buy a home there um we just didn't think it was going to last that long and it did wind up lasting and um the kids the good part about it was a great big pool in the backyard five bedrooms big house and the kids loved the fact by this time a couple of them were married Actually, we skipped through all the marriages. We had three marriages before this all happened. Our Billy married and Dubby married and Margie married. So we also had grandkids and um, my fairy tale living, I wanted um, home weddings with tents in the backyard because we had and the horse and carriage and the horse and carriages I felt like I was in a dream yeah in fact it was so cute I riding. get to ride in it he rode to the <clears throat> church with uh, all the daughters in their weddings and every single one of them had a wedding at Red Barn Acre with the horses and carriages and he would ride all the way through the streets of the town all the way down to our church and they would have the uh, nuptial mass there, and then the horse and carriage would take them back home again. Our, our weddings yeah. were tons of fun. We and now back in Las Vegas. Are we ready to go back to Vegas? Well, let's talk about the arrival of grandchildren. We had tons of grandchildren. We still had Big Bear at this point, so we were still having Easter vacations and July 4th and going up to Big Bear in the winter time skiing. And our children had the benefit of, of that home up in Big Bear um, for all those years. And all, and all 13 of these little grandkids, which there will be pictures too. That was another sad part for me because that first year that we were in Vegas, Moosey decided that we should sell Big Bear. Not me, you. I cried over that and tried to argue that it was not a good uh, investment to sell the house at this point things had started to go up in value but uh, we did sell and and in a way he was right we weren't using it once uh, the kids started to, to get married and have their own lives uh, people were working and it wasn't we weren't using it like we were when the kids were younger so we did sell it and we did make money quite a we more than doubled or tripled our, our money on that so that kind of went into the kitty too um, which is, by the way, information for later, the retirement video. Um, real estate's a good investment, most of the time. So, uh, back to Vegas. We did have great weekends. Moosey and I were alone out there, so it was almost like starting over again.
except for on those weekends when the whole family would come out around the pool. We'd have barbecues outside. We would take the kids to the casinos. A lot of them were married and grown. It was great. But we, you know, the, the business people that we hung out with, that I hung out with were a pretty hilarious group in their own right. I can remember coming down an elevator with the governor of Nevada and his name was Kenny. And you were teasing him about his name. What was I saying? Kenny, our leader. There was a Somebody television. High school, yeah. Was a, uh, oh, we, I had a friend, Kenny, and he was the class president. We always called him Kenny, our leader. And well, she's I. She's called him Governor Kenny, Kenny, our leader. And I wasn't drinking. Well, we were either. all half in the bag. I, I, well, not me. Not I right. wasn't a drinker, remember? No. Well, I could have my fun <laughs> without drinking. Anyway, it was a fun time for Moosey, and I know he enjoyed his uh, time there with his own company, uh, and I made the best of it. I even drove home on weekends alone when he just didn't want to drive home. Played poker. You did. He got into poker at that point. Well, you didn't like it before then. But on my weekends home, I discovered that one weekend, with as the grandchildren kept coming and coming, it was not enough time to pop around and visit them all. And when we would go home, I would stay in our own home up in one of the kids' bedrooms because our son was in the main bedroom. So it was difficult for me. Rides back to Vegas on a Sunday afternoon were filled with tears. But we did have fun weekends. We'd have Indiana. dinner every weekend in a casino uh, while Moosey played poker. I would watch movies in the movie theaters in the casinos. It was fun, but it was also better to go home on the weekends. So at one point, I kind of gave Moosey an ultimatum. I was teaching third grade by this time, and I realized I could get a pension uh, for the number of years that I had been teaching that if I stopped teaching that year, and I said to Moosey, it's time. No, it's not what you said. What did I say? What the hell are we doing here? Oh, maybe I did. And that's when I wrapped up the business, you finished out the semester, and we went into retirement. And but there I kept, we are. I kept customers and kept coming back from it. Los Angeles. Yeah, you did that a little here, bit. From here, this very house. Consultants <laughs> a little bit consulting, which was yeah. a, a little bit of fun for him. Uh, and, so, and lucrative. So <clears throat> we're, we're going to close this now with, um, hopefully you'll see a ton of pictures on this one. And um, once again, we've talked too much, but there was no way to get through 30 years. And I hope you had enough fun stories. I know you've been enjoying it. We both want to thank you so much for enjoying this the way you have. And um, thank you for your, your thumbs up. And for those of you who haven't subscribed yet, uh, we'd love it if you would. So we will be entering into retirement. See us on the next segment. We'll be retirement. Right here where We're we are now. now. <laughs> <laughs> love you all. God bless us all. Bye for now.